Okay, welcome to part three. We are going over how to do lighting portion of the energy part six Title 24 code and compliance forms for California. Um, and this video in this part, we'll be going over how to fill out these confusing forms. So once you've entered all your information in Energy Pro to know how to do that, check out our last video. Um, it will PDF this great form for you and it'll have these checkboxes. Um, right now I'm using a program called Bluebeam. If you don't have Bluebeam, go get it. It's fabulous. It does cost money, unfortunately. Um, but you can get a free trial if you don't already have it and you're stuck with nothing and you can check it out and see how awesome it is and then convince whoever it is in charge of money to buy it for you. Um, and so we'll be going over how to do this in Bluebeam, but you can also do this in other uh, PDF editing software. It may not be as easy, but you can do it. Um, so a number of things will be already filled out when you print this from Energy Pro. You'll have non-residential check, you'll have complete building checked, we have conditions space check. Um, and then these are uh, filled out, but later on we will have some yes-no columns that are not checked out. This is directly correlated to these check boxes. So if you've checked tailored method, then tailored method will be a yes over here. It's basically a table of contents. So your numbers should be filled out. Oh, incidentally, I forgot to say in our last video, you do need to figure out what your total area is. Um, and I always, since that needs to be corresponding with your mechanical folks and your envelope folks, um, you should really get your area from them so that it's consistent. But if you don't know what those are or you're in a time pinch, um, you can go to Revit, go to a 3D view, turn everything off in VG except for floors, and click on the floor, and it will tell you in the properties bar how much area that floor is. Not a greatest way, but you can do that and then add up all your floors. Um, so in the building section, you'll type in the area. So back to our form filling out. That number will be in here by multiplying your area by the total power density that you're allowed. And if you're under that amount, here it is here, then you comply. And you can also tell that by looking at your installed LPD here in, in sort of a um, halfway point if you haven't printed your forms yet. So we're good. We're at 0.5 um, watts per square foot, and that's really great. So next, you need to fill out all these yes, no's. What I recommend is if you're in Bluebeam, go to this text box, get the color and size on everything you want. I recommend using the background fill of none so that it's clear in the background. Um, and then what you can do is you can right click and add to tool chest and click my tools. I've already done that. And here's my tools over here. Check your little tool chest icon. And these are now your quick tools, which is fabulous because if I want no, I can just go like this you know, and click it down. And that makes it a really fast tool. Don't fill out this second form right here because that is for field inspectors to fill out. You do fill out these forms. Um, and it's basically saying, do you have this sheet or do you not have this sheet? Um, for example, are you doing power adjustment factor? No, we're not doing power adjustment factor. I do not recommend doing power adjustment factor. If you want to use PAF, you must do by room. You cannot do by building method and get PAF. Um, and if you are doing a, if you're a good Samaritan and you're designing your building really well to a low power density like 0.54, you do not need to do your PAF. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of time, and it's really not necessary unless you are at the, you know, very very edge of your your power density allowance and you're over, which if you are over, tisk tisk, go redesign, be a better person and get it lower without the PAF. PAF just essentially gives you extra wattages that you can use as a reward for using controls, which is kind of silly because you have to use controls anyway. Um, so we're not going to do PAF. I don't recommend doing it. It's lots of work. But if you do want to do that, then you can go study up on the code on how to do that. So this will be printed out from Energy Pro. Remember how I told you to keep your linear feet or each as your unit and your type of fixture and where it is. Um, the reason I've used lots of uh, shortened words is because I can never tell if it's going to run off. 
the edge. I've had a few projects where they run off the edge because I described too much. Um, someday I'll count how many characters it actually allows. And you have this all filled out. I don't ever bother to type in the, the tag and then delete this complete building office and type restroom. That's why I do this in Energy Pro. But technically speaking, this isn't the perfectly filled out form. And again, these should all be checked um, here and not these ones. And this will, the nice thing about Energy Pro is it'll give you multiple forms that you want, uh, that you need here. Uh, it, rather than if you just do it by hand, you kind of have to duplicate page and make a bunch of them to have enough room if you have a really long schedule. Um, also, you'll be wondering, why doesn't it print out project name? I typed it in. Um, so you can, again, take your typing tool, type out your name. Say this is um, ABC project. And of course, we don't want it that big. Um, and then you can right click, apply to all pages, which is a fabulous thing that's in Bluebeam. So now it's going to be there. It might not be lined up every time, but it's a lot of work that you can save that way and go adjust later if you need to, um, to make sure it's lined up. And then we're going to get to these really annoying pages where you have to, there's a bajillion of these. Um, and you have to fill out all these pieces of information. So let's say that you, Arian Bluebeam, create separate text boxes with your information, not all one because they won't be spaced right. And then take your camera tool and take a snapshot of that. So it's not text anymore. It's just an image, basically. And then paste that. Um, and you can right click, add to tool chest. My tools, and there you go. Now it's my tool chest number 10, and you can paste it right in there super fast, um, very handy, and then delete all this stuff here. And now you have a tool that you can just snap this in every single time, super fast. You can do the same thing for license and phone number, uh, which I find very handy. So, um, and if you're a fan of the Airbender, you will recognize my example text. <laughs> Side note. Um, mandatory lighting control decoration statements. I'm not going to go through these because you can read about them, and they have reference. Um, and you just basically need to say yes or no, which one they are. And again, use your super fast text box, uh, my tool chest uh, tools that you made. Um, next page is uh, mandatory and prescriptive indoor lighting control schedule. Um, this is also if you're getting PAF, it's calculated here. I don't recommend it. It's super complicated and takes a lot of time. So what we've done is we've shortened it. This has worked for us. Um, you might get a reviewer that is not cool with this, um, in which case I'm very sorry. Uh, and we'll be going over the shortened method because we're not doing by space method, we're doing by whole building method. If this is, is by space method, you'd have each space listed multiple pages. So I've created um, this great little Excel document that has, that I call my spark notes. Um, so I don't have to look up all these sections every time. So I'm just gonna create um, my miniature little spark notes right here. So the first uh, item I do is all enclosed spaces because you basically need some sort of mandatory shutoff for all enclosed spaces. I won't go over the exceptions and all the details of that, but um, we just try to keep things simple here and make everything comply with uh, on the most standard and, and consistent uh, level. So I say that uh, all enclosed spaces will have an occupancy control. If you're using Revit, you can actually go get counts in Revit um, by doing a lighting device schedule and see how many occupancy sensors you have. But it's not really necessary unless you're calculating PAF. And then you want to know, OK, do I need to press NA? Do I need to press check mark? Or do I need to press E for exempt? I don't know what these mean. And they don't explain them. So that's why I suggest having Spark Notes. So the first one is 130.1A which if you're in the code right here that you've downloaded, not the manual and not the handbook, but the actual code, you can uh, check out this page that I'll have on the screen for a while during the video. You can copy it down. The page number is listed there. So if you want to go read about what the full non-summary form of this is, you can. So let's go back to our page. Uh, 
we have the first one is uh, manual control of the lights. So uh, our three types are all enclosed spaces, rooms with skylights or windows, and again, all enclosed spaces. So uh, for the first one, we're going to have manual control of the lights in all three of these space types. Um, the second one is dimming. We make it pretty easy on ourselves by putting dimming everywhere, even in the bathrooms, even in the janitors. If you're asking me why would you do that, go read this section of the code. Um, it makes it pretty difficult to get an exception for that. And we've tried to pull the exception, and some reviewers are very strict about that. So I recommend just doing dimming everywhere and make it, make it easy on yourself. The third one is auto shut off via timer or occupancy sensor. And there are some restrictions on where you can use a timer um, as opposed to an act sensor. So go check out the code for that. But we have, for all three of these, we have uh, the, uh, we're meeting this, so we check mark. For the next column, um, we have automatic daylighting in response to daylight. That isn't, uh, that doesn't apply to spaces that don't have skylights or windows, hence why we split this out. So we put a check mark here and NA and NA for not applicable on the other um, space types. The next one is uh, demand response. So you can go check out this section of the code. It's not required for all buildings, only buildings of a certain size. So in this case, we're saying NA because it's not big enough to require it. Um, but you know, it depends on how big your building is. Or actually, I think we did check it. I'm sorry. We did check it because it's big enough. But you, can, you may be able to press NA if you have a small enough building. Um, and then reduction of wattage through controls is essentially your PAF calculation. I do not want to do this, so I'm going to say NA. And finally, daylight controls in your secondary zones. Um, so that, again, applies to the daylighting but not the non-daylighting portion. Um, and then all of this stuff has to do with PAF. As you can see, PAF credit calculation. I just put NA here because I don't want to, I don't even want to apply to get this extra credit. So there's our little Spark notes. You can take these down in their page numbers. Um, pause the video here to do that, and I'm going to move on. Again, you'll have another, you'll have these signature pages everywhere. So like I said in the last part, just make some, tools for those and then go check, check, check and put them down on all your pages. Um, the next page is all done for you from Energy Pro. It's essentially calculating uh, your watts per square foot that you're allowed. Another, another signature page. Um, here's an example of when ABC project didn't line up. And then we all get to the exterior part, which is going to be in a different video. So. Congratulations, you got through all of interior form filling out. Um, in the next video, we'll be going over the exterior portion. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next video.